Module 1 Data Entry and Basic Formatting Here we are going to learn how to enter the data into Microsoft Project 2010 and also learn some of the basic concepts of formatting in Microsoft Project 2010. So to begin with, this would be the screen that would be visible to you when you start Microsoft Project 2010. So the very first thing we require to do is to go under the column task name and enter the task or activity name. For sake of simplicity, we are just considering single alphabets over here. So the very first task name is say A, B, C, T, E, F and G. So I've entered the seven tasks as you can see over here along this number. Now in the very adjacent column it says a duration which is the total span of working time for a task. So let's say the task A lasts for about 4 days. So you click over here and type 4. Task B lasts for about 6 days. C for about 4, 2, 6, 4 and task G lasts for about 5 days. So once the entry has been done you can see the bar exists in a very light blue shade over here in this part of the screen so it indicates that they are manually scheduled so what manually scheduled means is basically it cannot automatically adjust the dates or durations or with respect to the calendar which we would see in future how to use that many functions but the primary thing that needs to be done after task name and duration are entered is to convert it into an auto scheduled mode so to convert this into an auto scheduled mode you just go over into this square cell like thing over here and click on it so that entire thing is selected and under the taskbar you may go to auto schedule so basically it indicates that auto schedule function automatically calculate the start finish and duration values for the task based on dependencies constraints calendars and many other factors so just click on auto schedule now you can see that all the bars in this part of the screen are converted to dark blue and now they are auto scheduled now all the activities or the task cannot start all together as we can see over here they might be having some relationship with one another so let's try to understand how to enter this relationship suppose if we say that activity b starts after activity a then what we would like to do is we would like to add activity a over here which precedes activity B so what you might be thinking is to directly write activity A but this is an incorrect step you cannot write directly activity A over here you need to enter the number at with respect to activity A so that is basically a serial number type of thing so if you look onto the number corresponding to activity A is 1 so you need to write 1 over here suppose activity C also precedes activity A then again you write to need 1 over here. Note 1 is a number with respect to activity A. Suppose activity D is also preceded by activity A then you need again to write 1 over here. Now activity E is preceding activity B so yes you are correct you need to write 2 over here. Now you might have a question that activity F can proceed only one or more than one task so what to do in that case it's quite simple let's assume that task F is preceded by both C and D so you need to just write the numbers of both of them as 3 comma 4 similarly let's say if G is preceded by both E and F so you need to write 5 comma 6 so you can see over here once we press enter this automatically gets a relationship over here like this so now if we want to look further that yes we know that activity b is after activity a so if we look on to the relationship that is activity b which is this one starts once the activity a is completed so the relationship is finish to start which means after activity a finishes activity b starts now if you want to put uh, some time interval between both of them between a finish of a very first activity and start of the very next activity that is generally referred as a lag in the project language so if you want to enter the lag 
it's quite simple just suppose if we want to say that activity b has a lag of two days after activity a starts and has a relationship of finish to start you can just double click over here and go to advanced uh, sorry predecessors sorry we need to go to predecessors now you can see the relationship over here that is finish to start start to start finish to finish start to finish so we are to take a relationship of finish to start and say that it has a lag of two days so you can directly write two over here or click over here in the small tab and adjust it to two days then click on ok so you can see that we have a gap of two days in between actually here it's four days because saturday and sunday are considered to be off as per the calendar existing at this moment so it adjusted by about four days but actually it's two days only now suppose say activity d has a start to start relationship with lag of seven days with respect to a so just observe how this is now with respect to that is just after activity a is completed activity d starts so now we want to change the relationship to start to start so again go uh, double click on the number adjacent to the activity you will get this menu box open now click over here start to start and lag adjust the lag to seven days and click on ok so you can basically see that this activity D begins seven days after the activity A begins so this is a type of relationship that has changed at this moment and now say that activity G has a finish to start relationship with activity E with lag of two days so you basically need to double click over here now here you have two options activity 5 and activity 4 that is E and F respectively so if we say that it has a lag of two days with respect to activity E you need to type 2 over here you don't need to change F because the relationship with F is Z with zero lag itself that is it has just finished to start relationship so press ok and this is what you get so this is how we can establish the relationship between different activities with lag now uh, it's better to always work with a detailed Gantt chart so actually this you can see over here this is a Gantt chart now if you want to go to the detailed Gantt chart you can click over here and in more views over here and you can just type or see the detailed Gantt that is D click on it and make it apply so this is basically the same format but what the change is let me go again to the Gantt chart and then again come back you can see over here that all the activities are in blue color so you cannot actually make out which are the activities having a slack or in other words what we call uh, as a float so the detailed Gantt chart gives a very better and a very proper understanding about which are the critical activities of the project by highlighting them in red color so if you again go back to the detail Gantt chart view so click over here and it's over here detail Gantt chart view we can see that all the critical activities that is activity A, B, E which are critical in the project are highlighted as a red color now this is a project with only seven tasks or activities so it becomes easy to identify which bar is for which activity by correlating with the left side of the screen but if you are supposed to say 100, 200, 300 or 500 tasks then it really becomes a difficult to understand which task or which bar belongs to which task so for that we need to learn some of the very key essential formatting tips so to start with we need to go here in the formatting bar over here as you can see on your screen click on format go to format and on bar and this you can see two parts bar shape and bar text we need to go on to the bar text now this basically indicates whatever you select would be shown in the left side of the bar or right or top of the bar or bottom of the bar or inside the bar so where is a place you want to put the legend type of thing onto your bar so if I want to put the name of the task that is A 
on the top of the bar i will go on the top of the bar click on this drop down menu now in this list of table we need to select the name that is this column so you need to type just yes, you can type n on your keyboard and you have a name over here so basically the this title and this title should be similar so click on name so you can see over here a sample how would it appear and press ok now you can see as we were over here on the task A the only single task that is only the single bar has got this nomenclature so if you got want to get it for all the bars at the very first time you just need to click over here that is in the small box that has we did earlier to select the whole working sheet just click over here go into format bar then again we need to put it on top so top press name and so we can get name press ok so you can see now the names are displayed on each and every bar so we can move on to this side you can move on to this or zoom out if it's not visible and finally we can get a better understanding of each and every pass so we need not to go again every time on the left part of the screen and check it again so this is all with data entry and basic formatting part